I mean, it's the most prolific. It, it, I wouldn't say it might not be actually the most prolific, but the most known and publicised case of mm. poltergeist phenomenon. And there are some fantastic ones overseas which have taken place, but people mm. don't know them, but you know they will. But the thing is, it, it, it's, you know, you know the, the, the film, The Entity, I mean, that's based very loosely on, a, on, a, on a, uh, an alleged true story of, of a lady who was being molested by a, a spirit. Now, would, would you put that down, that type of thing down, to poltergeist activity? <laughs> <laughs> We've currently, the UPI are currently involved in a case. Now, I I'm, I'm can't go into details about it obvious, for obvious reasons, but the case itself, we've had to follow up uh, the church, a clean-up case uh, against the church, unfortunately, and the medium. Uh, and again, I can't go into too much details because, obviously, we can't. Mm. But the person involved, we actually think now that the case, we've actually referred it again to the police because we think it's a physical uh, events that are taking place rather than paranormal events that are taking place. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so that's a prime example of entity like incubus, succubus case, etc, mm -hmm. etc. They're all tied in loosely to those the same banner of the poltergeist activity. Mm -hmm. But in this, t this end, to one opportunity that we would get to do something of consequence ends up being, we believe, a physical manifestation in regards to other people rather than mm -hmm. a paranormal. I discussed the case, the entity case, in regards to Colossal Moran. Mm -hmm. um, which again is a second pseudonym. Um, her, her experiences in, in regards to the entity film. Uh, Kerry, Kerry Gaynor, one of the principal investigators there, and uh, I've seen the photographs um, and I've seen some of the video footage, and it was quite profound from what I saw. And I was also informed of that, was in fact carried out uh, an investigation at Washington Power Psychological Department mm -hmm. uh, where they looked at the footage, um, they reviewed the case details, everything was done as far as they were concerned um, uh, properly and scientifically. Um, nobody has yet to say that uh, the footage is, un is not authentic, you know, it hasn't been proven so. Uh, it looks to be like uh, there are balls of light moving around which mm -hmm. literally are seen and videoed. It's not like the typical orb phenomena where mm -hmm. you know, I've caught an orb on film where it's uh, probably a dust particle or something. It's uh, these things were seen with the naked eye and photographed and filmed at the same time. And, and this as well, to add to the authenticity, is information that's not released to the public domain. It's not Joe Blogg's Paranormal Inc. jumping on and saying we've got the best bit of paranormal footage ever on the internet. Mm. Everyone sees it on YouTube. This is stuff that only certain people have had access to that information, mm. which, which I believe authenticates it a little bit more because of the. No, no exposure. Well, I, I've seen some of the footage of, of this the entity case, mm -hmm. and, I, I, and I have to say, um, if it's not, hang on, if it's not true, it's being acted extremely well. Mm. I think because you you can almost see yeah. fear. I mean, I know that the, the footage is pretty, it's not yeah. brilliant quality, but yeah. there is a fear there, and and you kind of. You, you can almost even now when I was watching it, and some time ago when I saw it, but the, the, and I haven't seen all of it, but you, you, even sitting watching it, you, you could sense. It's just a bedroom scene. A fear, yeah, yeah, you could sense that, that there was, but there was a fear. You could sense it watching and telling you, and I don't know whether that's me making that mm. happen because yeah, I know yeah. what's going to go on. But saying that again, another case. Well, I say a case we've been involved in a TV documentary lately. Uh, one of the persons involved in the documentary is an actress and um, her portrayal of fear was very, very good. Actresses, yeah, well, that's what they're paid to do. Yeah, mm. yeah, it can happen. I'm going to have to make you know, work for lots of people whose, whose acting abilities are fantastic. <laughs> I work with someone who's absolutely awful. Someone's actually brilliant, but then that's, when that's your trade, you're going to be, be good on it. Uh, I have been lucky, like I said, twice um, throughout the years of investigating to come across two cases, one in Heat Mersey and one in Rochdale. Um, and both were quite as profound as, as each other. The one in, in was 1995 in Rochdale. We were first alert, alerted to it by an article in the Manchester News. Um, scary spills. I remember. I remember the headline now because it sounded just so ridiculous. Scary spills scare family from home. <laughs> scary spills scare, scare family, family from home. home. Great bit of and um, it was regarding a typical a typical family which were living in a prefabricated bungalow. Now those were only designed initially to be temporary homes, you know, mm. but they lived there for 14 years and quite happy, didn't want to move. And uh, in a nice little close in, 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 in Stockport, uh, in Rochdale. And um, they were having water formings. You know, the water was just mm. suddenly pumping out of the ceiling and suddenly it'd appear on the door. Um, and it would just sounded absolutely ridiculous. Things getting ruined, carpets, furniture. 
and the council had got involved and they needed investigated and they couldn't uh, they apparently went in and did an investigation and couldn't find, a, couldn't find a rational explanation as to why um, these things are happening. So they accused, the, the Rochdale City Council accused the family of ruining their own furniture and carpets by throwing water on them and blaming it on something paranormal in hope of being rehoused to a better building for instance. It was quite clear to me when I got there that the family didn't want to move. They did live there for 14 years, were happy. The garden was lovely. They spent a lot of money in the garden. Uh, and to me, it doesn't come across, you know, you can tell them usually when family... You can tell that fairly quick. Straight away. Yeah. And, uh, and, and genuine fear, you know, which, uh, which was interesting. You know, that, and, and of course, that, well, I took, on, I took on the case. It's the only time, actually, in 24 years, I've decided on one particular night to pack it in. To, uh, to, what, made, what made that happen? Um, I got hit in the back so hard it, it, it carried me to the other side of the room. By an object or by no, something? No, I got punched. But it was, it was an odd, odd sensation. I can only describe it, because I've been asked this thousands and thousands, it went international this case, so everybody all over the world was asking me this question, what did it feel like, what did it feel like? And it is an electrical shock and a physical punch at exactly the same time. That's how it feels. Mm-hmm. I thought I was an electric shot, being mm-hmm. elevated like an electric shot, but physically punched. I had to bruise. The investigators are more interested in photographing the back as opposed to photographing where what it hit me. Mm-hmm. But um, it, I, I left the building for about half an hour. And, yeah, I, 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 that, that's the only time in my life I've ever actually thought of I should be doing this. It's strange, though, isn't it? Because you said that that, that um, I've been involved in investigations where. Um, Stuart Torvald was, was, was had a similar thing happen to him, he was punched and, and all that and, and uh, he called me the next day and had quit and so anyone who went to see him actually saw the bruises on his body that were immense. I mean it's like he actually had gone a couple of rounds with Mike Tyson and you know at least still got the ears. Sorry? Still got the ears. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's that weird kind of um, that point when you're looking at this, these things, you think, crumbs, this, is, this, is, this can be dangerous. Um, but we're going to just c- uh, go away for a break. Please uh, don't go away and rejoin us in a couple of minutes where we're going to carry on this conversation.